I'd like you to imagine something with me. It's something that I've experienced, and I suspect it's something you've also experienced. You wake up one morning, and as you're waking up, you become aware that something just isn't right. You're just not feeling yourself. You lay in bed and you think, what's going on? Am I, am I getting sick? And, and you move your hand from the part of the bed where it's warm and you push your arm over a little to where the sheets are still cold and you shiver and you realize, maybe I have a fever. And you swing your legs out of bed and go to stand up and, and you seem to have a little bit of vertigo. The room is spinning, your head is spinning. And as you begin your morning routine, you're thinking, did I come down with some sort of flu? What's going on? Everything feels like an effort. I have to think about what I'm doing. And, and familiar things, things that normally are pleasing to you, like the smell of coffee as it's, as it's percolating. Uh, it now seems a little bit nauseating. And, and everything you're doing takes more effort and concentration. And, and you're aware that you just don't feel yourself. When we wake up one morning not feeling well from a fever or a flu or something like that, nothing serious, just something minor that's going to pass in a day or two, we say, I'm sick. We don't say, my body is sick. And we say that I'm sick because everything about us feels off kilter. It's not, it's not the way it should be. You know, our normal sunny disposition, well, we don't have that great sunshine anymore. We're just not feeling well. We may be more irritable or just want to be left alone uh, so that we can get better. Or whatever it is, we have changed. The reason I'm using this example is as an illustration. We are made up of different dimensions of ourself. Many people say body, mind, spirit connection. I talk in terms of dimensions of self. But what those metaphors really mean is that we are already in the world as people who are whole, as people who have these different pieces that work together with each other. And when one of those pieces is not the way it should be. It impacts all of the other. So that when we're waking up sick, it's not just that our body is sick, but psychologically we don't feel as well. Mentally, we're not as sharp. Emotionally, you know, we, we just don't have the same uh, happiness that we typically do because we're sick. In a similar way, when something's not right in any other dimension, it impacts all of us. We think of this mostly in terms of the impact of other dimensions, or at least some other dimensions, on our physical well-being. For instance, we know that if somebody has some difficulties with anger, that they get angry really easily, that if that continues over time, if they don't know how to manage their anger better, that it's going to impact them physically that they'll have high blood pressure or develop high blood pressure, and that high blood pressure can go on to heart attack or strokes. And that all started with not managing anger in a better way. So we know about things like that. That's, that's a common understanding. But we don't think as much about how the spiritual dimension of our life impacts everything. And, that, and it's probably because we think of things like spirituality and religion as sort of private, as what you do on your own, as what your personal beliefs are. But we don't recognize how much they impact the rest of us. That things like having a positive image of a deity, that when we have a positive image for those of us who believe in a God, that that impacts our health in positive ways and our mental health in positive ways. But people who believe in a punitive God, that has negative impacts for their health and for their mental health. And those who have regular spiritual practice, that helps maintain a healthy body and a healthy mind. I talk about a lot of this research in the video 
meditation for a healthier mind and body. So you may want to explore that further through that video. But the research really shows that, that we're integrated whole people. Our problem is that we often don't recognize it. And it's not that we just don't recognize it for ourselves. Generally, specialists are focused on a particular area and don't look at the interconnections. And that, that can be problematic. For instance, this week I was talking to one of my students. She's working on her doctorate and we we're talking about her dissertation and she was reflecting working with other uh, mental health clinicians and how they don't seem to grasp that when somebody is, is, is experiencing depression or is diagnosed with depression or with an anxiety disorder, it isn't just that they have a mental health disorder, that it impacts them physically, that some people literally feel pain or they feel lethargy or they feel other symptoms in their body related to the mental health diagnosis. And that's indeed true because we're integrated whole. That's that body, mind, spirit connection. Now, I talk about dimensions of self rather than mind, body, spirit connection, because I think that mind, body, spirit connection is a little bit limited. Uh, I think there's more to us than just mind, body and spirit. So for instance, our cultures are part of us and the cultures we came from and the ones we live in, they shape us. Our families and relationships are part of us. You know, in terms of the mind, both how we think as well as our mental health and our emotions and psychology, well, those are both mind, but they're sort of different from each other. And that spiritual dimension, the way in which we find meaning and purpose and value and hope and awe, as well as the things we believe, all of those things that we put in that spiritual dimension, that impacts all of the rest of us. I think it's important for us to realize from the get-go that we're already fully integrated people. We don't need to become integrated. We are. That's what it means to be human. We're, we already are integrated. Our general problem is that we don't recognize that we are integrated. We don't pay attention to what that means. And the way we pay attention, the way we learn, is to step back and to be a little more mindful. Maybe mindfulness isn't the best way to think about it. Maybe to think about it in simpler terms will be helpful. To step back out of our busy lives and to simply be quiet, to be silent, and to reflect on what's happening among, uh, uh, within us, around us, what's happening for us, so that we become aware of the fluctuations we experience in our life and the things that pull us off center. You know, our, our culture pulls us to do more, to be very active, to be very productive, to be always on and doing, but it's important for our well-being to step back and to be quiet, both in the inside and on the outside. And I talk about that in the video, Finding Quiet, that when we find quiet within ourselves, we become aware of, of what's happening for us and who we are, so that we're able to, to move forward in a way that's more balanced and healthy for us. And I think that's gonna be really important for all of us, for our growth, for our well-being for our happiness. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, make some comments about how you've experienced that mind-body-spirit mind, connection. Share the video. And if you're interested, that illustration I started with, waking up one morning feeling sick, I borrowed that from an old book published in the 60s, Psychology of the Sick Bed, uh, written by Johannes Vandenberg. It's a study on how people experience illness as impacting every other dimension of self. It's a fascinating book. Thanks for taking some time today to, to watch this video. I appreciate your time. Have a great day.